704, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, first point on our agenda is comments from the floor, but I don't see anyone here, so I assume there is none. So um, the, the first point is a presentation by the new BOCES superintendent, Dave Ziskin. I'd like to welcome you and um, anxious to hear what you have to say. Thrilled to be here. Thanks. Um, I brought a handout just as I'm making my little little tour. Not sure if everyone projects you do, you do, um, but if if it's okay, I'd just like to pass these around uh, for you to take take just a second. Do you mind if I take the student representative seat? Just be more yes, comfortable. to me. Dave here. He said he's going to be here, but it's I'll get up and move if he comes. If he comes, you got it. All right. <laughs> so uh, this is just a, a hello tour. There are some familiar faces here, which is nice uh, for me as, as I make my way uh, around the BOCES. My, my start date was August 5th. Um, I'm really enjoying the work. And I wanted to come so everyone could put a, a face with, with the name, even though I know quite a few people in this room. And uh, talk about how I see uh, BOCES role in the region, how we can support and partner uh, with all the component school districts. Uh, trying to bring everything back to, to the BOCES mission uh, to, to drive our work. And that's what the first slide is. I'm not going to read the mission to you. Uh, kind of self-evident of what a BOCES does. But to me, what we uh, are truly charged with, and I apologize for how small and light it may be, uh, is at the bottom of the first slide. What, what we're endeavoring to do is, is to truly be a partner uh, with schools, uh, with community agencies and industry in the region to deliver the best kids we can when they, when they graduate so they, they can go out there and, and, and have great lives. So, so that's uh, what drew me to the position was, was really that, that mission. I think every educator should be in it to help kids Prepare, uh, to help prepare kids for their lives after graduation. Uh, to me, uh, and I described it this way to our faculty on our, on our opening day and continue to deliver the message, we even have a more special uh, charge. And it's because by partnering with, with the schools in the region, we're delivering the services that you've determined you can't deliver locally. So if we're not there, who's going to do this? So, so really, it's critically important for us to be there to support uh, the students and the district's most most critical needs. So the second slide talks about being a partner. I just want to talk quickly with you uh, about two those those two bullets there. Uh, Nick is a member of, of, of a couple of our uh, superintendent advisory committees. That's that's a new structure this year to kind of have not just communication at at the building level, uh, on the principal level, and the director level, but also to better inform uh, the chiefs in, in the region of. of what is happening, but also have it be a two-way, uh, a two-way dialogue, so that when we, when it comes to the time where we're building the, the BOCES budget and, and program offerings, it's better informed by what our consumers uh, actually desire. Uh, we meet once a month as as chiefs, uh, and as you can imagine, between all the, the, the state discussions that we have to have, uh, and, and all the other issues going on three or four hour meeting, you know, time gets eaten up pretty quickly. So what we arrived at was we would meet every other month uh, in these four committees and, and our chiefs would report out. We've started this. Uh, Stacy was actually there the day after our first meeting with our instructional services uh, committee of, of superintendents. Uh, she was there for, for a follow-up meeting to that. And, and that's kind of how we want to operate to, to be, re in order to be responsive, uh, we need to get feedback uh, and inform uh, representatives from the component schools. And the other piece, uh, the Mohawk Sac and Valley School Roads Association, there will be two convenings of that group this year. One will be uh, on the night of the BOCES budget vote, to kill two birds with one stone. Uh, and the other we're planning, we're planning for uh, mid-November. And the idea is to provide relevant board development activities. So as time uh, starts, you know, we will be soliciting uh, through uh, Julian Freeman, our, our president, uh, to representatives of your board, uh, some topics that may be relevant to you, but I think you're going to hear a broken record this year. A lot of what we're going to be talking about is this transition to the next generation learning standards and how can we ensure that this happens more effectively than it did the last time around, which was, as, as I think we can all agree, uh, pretty much uh, ineffective. Uh, disaster. Yep, you got it. Uh, 
not going to spend too much time with these next two slides. I think it's, it's just a review, a uh, reminder of, of what BOCES can do. Really, we provide services uh, and programs. If uh, more than one local district determines that we, we can offer it more effectively or efficiently, uh, if, if we do collaborate to, to offer the services. So that's uh, that term, COSER. Uh, and then the other services around management services, a good example is we've moved to this uh, homeschool COSER this year to kind of take that off of as a, as a former uh, component superintendent. I uh, would have loved to have had, <laughs> had that at my disposal. And that, that was something that came from the chiefs as, as, as a service that they would desire. And the last slide just talks about something that, that I've already alluded to. Um, we have a, a, a draft of a goal for the region to ensure that every K through eight student is sitting uh, in front of a teacher who's prepared with aligned curriculum next year. Uh, this is something that, that really hits home with me. Um, I've got a 16 year old who was in fourth grade the last time we made the transition. Uh, and it was pretty rocky, but, you know, explaining to a, to, to a little guy how every year he had to go take these tests and he would go in and take these tests and instruction really uh, hadn't prepared him for that, wasn't closely aligned to it. But remember, the, the standards are important beyond just those three through eight tests. The standards are what uh, is, is kind of the scaffolding to get to those exit outcomes, which goes back to, to every school's mission in this region, uh, which somehow talks about preparing kids for their lives after after they leave, leave us. So regardless of the tests, the tests are coming in the spring of 21. Uh, we want to make sure that we're preparing kids at each uh, rung on the ladder uh, so, so that they're prepared uh, for graduation. Um, our plan is, is to work collaborative, collaboratively in the region. We're part of a statewide consortium uh, with, with a framework to uh, align uh, curriculum to uh, these, these new adjusted standards. Uh, and you, you'll probably be hearing a bit about it here and there in, in board reports from, from your administrators along the way uh, because it's, it, we have a, a professional learning community of, of teacher leaders and administrators who we're training uh, to support the work in, in your districts. And there are also some, some districts have chosen to uh, collaborate with one another uh, on superintendent conference days and in other ways to bring that, that groups together for some synergy. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just wanted to say hello, tell you how I see the role of BOCES, and tell you I look forward to, to partnering with you and, and helping your school district. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Next point on the agenda is uh, tuition for non-resident students. So we had a, a meeting and discussion about possibly instituting tuition for uh, for next school year, um, and meeting about policy and what we you know, might uh, consider. And uh, I guess the discussion here would be if we wanted to pursue that, how much would that be? And uh, I think it would. Uh, of us to try to get this out as fast as we could so parents next year would know what to expect if we did incorporate a tuition charge. So, is that anybody else piggyback off of? I think first we need to start with the policy. Yeah. So, um, policy committee has worked with um, <coughs> Oh, wait. So, you have to agree, so we want to go into the 7131 first. Is that agreeable to everybody? Yes. All right, so why don't we do that then? So, we'll put okay. so we've worked collaboratively, um, and this one spanned the two administrations, so it took us a little while to make sure we caught everything. Um, but we think what we've put in here is uh, Accurate, and we also got input from uh, Stacy and Jen. They came and met with the policy committee early on that we were considering this. So there are some language changes in here, and they are highlighted in yellow. Um, the uh, main thing behind. 
behind this, I guess, is that we wanted to make sure that we had, as a district, the ability to um, ensure that guests of our district were engaged in the academic process the way we expected. And if they weren't, we wanted to be able to address that. And that included parents. I think that's the way I would say it in overarching way. Um, so we added some language in here that states that not only if someone does something that would cause them to be um, suspended, we had another sentence that said, in addition, multiple infractions that disrupt the educational process will jeopardize the students' continued enrollment in the district. So that, that could be reassessed on an annual basis. Could, um, could you give some background to that? <clears throat> yeah, so when we met with um, Jen and Stacy, there were some situations where there were marginal infractions that were continuing to happen over and over and over and taking teacher and administration bandwidth and really taking that away from other students and our policy didn't allow us to address that. So we wanted to be able to address that and have dialogue with the parents and the students saying that, look, these infractions, while they're not enough to get somebody suspended, they are lessening the educational experience and we're not happy about that and it needs to change or else you might not be able to Well, okay. um, any questions or comments? I have a question. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, and I'm not saying it here or maybe I'm missing it, a student who has been here um, from say fifth grade through tenth grade is entering their junior year, are they, they've been, they haven't had to pay anything and now suddenly their junior year but they would that's why I suggested we talk about this policy first, because this policy has nothing to do with charge. Oh, okay. This okay. policy is just the ability to attend. Okay. And how to district person um, so we're and not our rules around attendance. Okay, so we're not tying the tuition into that. They're separate policies. Okay. Um, and they're separate votes historically for, for the board. Um, the other thing, just to remind everybody, this is based on space being available and us not having to add a teacher or um, they, they also have to be able to fit in the programs that exist here and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now one thing that we probably should talk about is because as a part of our deliberation as a policy committee, we made several <coughs> inquiries to our legal um, <coughs> Council, specifically around um, a case that's gone on here in the area. And once a student comes into our district, um, we, and they might need s certain services that cost the district more money, they are our student. And we can't refuse those services. And we can't turn that student away. <coughs> However, it still is space limited, so if the next year there's not room for that student because our enrollment has changed or whatever, then it's it's a whole new year over again to make sure that they fit. So my question to that would be, um, how do we determine if we have room? Um, what the policy outlines, <coughs> is it can't require us to um, have any more expense structure. Um, so adding another section or um, hiring another teacher no, that I or creating a new program. Um, so at one level it's that. At lower levels, um, for example, we talked about kindergarten. I don't remember if that was the night you were there, but it, in one of our sessions as a policy committee, we talked about kindergarten. And there's only so many seats. So if the seats are full, there's no space. Okay, so my we question. We will not create another class. So my question then, in the policy, are we gonna have set numbers? Because that's, that's you know, if we, I'm sorry, we don't have any room, well how do you know that? Well, we have, 
you know, 25, 25, 25, <coughs> and 25, and we're not, we have decided <coughs> that we're not going to go to 26. Well, what are you going to do when you have somebody who moves into the district? And I just, so that's my question is, is that gray area there, well, how come you don't have room for Johnny, you know? So that's the discretion of the, of the administration and, the, okay. and looking at, for example, you made a perfect case, I think, Stacey, uh, AIS, right, mm -hmm. where we had a certain amount of students, and not necessarily in the, in the class, but now we have enough spots in AIS, so if we added more students, we would have to add another section of AIS, mm -hmm. which would, be, would add cost to the district. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we always, I think, are strategic of leaving a couple spots open because here's what we don't want to happen. Come January, two new kids come in, mm -hmm. we're telling Johnny that you can't come here anymore for the rest of the year because we're full and we have to add another section. So I think it's never going to be a point where it's going to say, here's the numbers, here's it. It's going to come down to resources and numbers, but it's going to fluctuate. And so I think the discretion of the, of, the, of the administration on that is this big. And we did talk about technically the policy in that case that Nick was just talking about. If we have a student moving to the district in October and that puts us over the limit, so far we've accommodated, we've been able to accommodate everybody staying in the district for the whole year. But the policy doesn't say we have to. And I think we're trying to head that off as much as we can. Correct. Yeah. Can correct on that. I think we try to keep a couple because we we never know. You know we hate to turn a child away in December, January, third of the year. Even though that's not our responsibility, but we. Yeah. The other thing too that's on that vein that we tried to address is we did put a deadline in place, which had never been there before. So people, families have to notify us by July 1st so that we can plan that head count appropriately. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Do I, I, I should have started this way. Do I have a motion to approve the amended um, policy 7131? I'll make the motion. I'll second Okay, any further discussion? I just want to comment. You did a nice job. Thank you for, Thank you. for sum, summarizing that. And you know, I think we just need to be aware that uh, anytime we accept an out of district student, we increase our risk for liability, financial liability. You know, it is the nature of our our business, though. Mm -hmm. So just keep that a long in. discussion. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Scott. Thanks for answering. I don't see that on approval, so I think I'll just go ahead and ask for a vote at this point. Mm -hmm. So all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Next point is uh, non-resident students. Um, I'd just like to, before we go to the discussion of that, I really think it's premature for us to have this discussion at this point, um, because I don't really feel I have enough information to make an informed decision. Um, I'd like to know what some of the thoughts are about what the concept, and I know we've had some discussion about this in the past, but I, I really would like to have more concrete figures and numbers to know whether or not this is something that we really do need to consider, what would be the rationale Tuition. for it. Yeah, tuition. And, you know, and whether or not it's something that we really need to do, because we haven't have charged tuition since we started the, you know, welcoming um, non-resident students. And I, I would be loath to do it unless I'm, I can be convinced that it's something that you know there's re a need for, um, or a, a solid reason for. And so I think that we should probably have some discussion uh, or some research first, so that we can have some of that information that would give us an informed way to make the decision. And I don't think it's a pressing matter right now because it's not for this year, but for next year, unless I'm mistaken. The only, the only thing, um, first, we, we do have some data, and from our discussions with our legal counsel, there are some things that I think we, as a policy committee and administration, got informed on. Um, and then second, you're right, um, it wouldn't go into effect until next year. But we also had a long discussion about enabling people to plan so we don't want to like drop that on people that are coming to the district as an added district which is why we want to make sure we have that discussion earlier rather than later 
I'm not disagreeing with anything you yeah. said. But well, I mean, we I don't I, want to wait till next I, July. I just think I just think it would be good for the board to have that information prior to our discussion about it, just so that we can then discuss the, the basis for a yes or no at what level. Sure. So we could maybe decide to table that until the, uh, the October meeting. Yeah, I and, think it would be and, and just have that information to the board members prior to that um, discussion. I think so it would be fair to um, put the other district information that we learned, the neighboring districts, what they're doing, and what legal counsel said to us about the risks that were coming from the, the local case um, so that we can kind of have that. And I'll summarize what the state aid planning said as well. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the money and the aid and what we could potentially lose or not gain. Right. Okay. And also some information about what the, our potential financial benefit is from uh, um, yeah, that's non resident the state students aid. versus, um, yeah. you know, what it costs us. So yeah. we can just, like I said, I just think that'll give us a yep. basis for We, we did that together for October. Yeah, we did get all that data, but we don't have it in a nice sheet for everybody. Okay, yeah. well, that's what, yeah. we, that's what I think. I think if we at least get it approved by even say December at the latest, yeah, we can give people seven or eight months to okay. make a choice for people to claim. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so is that agreeable with everyone to just take a look at this point? Yep. Yes. Okay, the next thing is uh, capital EPC budget uh, being project update. And I just want to say I couldn't really read it because I got tired of looking like this. <laughs> Right. Right. I honestly gave up. I right couldn't flip, flip it. I tried. Did you, did you I couldn't. Flip I couldn't figure out how to flip it. Right click clockwise. Yeah. I didn't have an arrow. Oh, at the top. Where? Yeah. Top right. Or if you just right click on it and you can click clockwise and then we'll show. Rot oh, rotate, son of a gun. <laughs> Where were you when I needed you? You always call me, Mark. Okay, I will take you. I need your cell phone. Yeah, oh, yeah, I can't find you. <laughs> so I'll update the capital project. Uh, there's a few loose ends from getting towards the end. Uh, we have uh, goal posts on the football field, some uh, finishing up with some grading, uh, teacher workroom in the elementary school, which will take place in January and through the Christmas break. Uh, holiday break, we have bus garage, cameras, and swiper access. And then again, we'll walk through and make sure there's the loose ends that are this, this left. That we, you know, we're starting to see some of the things that they didn't finish. And uh, we'll walk through. Gary's been outstanding. He's been like, hey, uh, it's amazing. He knows every little detail, and he brings up every single point in the meeting. So that's about where we are with the capital project piece. We're starting to put together the financials uh, to, to send those in as well. Um, and then the EPC project. Oh, uh, before we get off, yep. do you want to have a discussion about the whole thing or one at a time? Meaning, EPC. I have a question about the campus. Okay, sure. Go ahead. That now. Yep. Um, so I, was wondering, I know that the sidewalk idea was abandoned. Correct. And so could you talk about what the proposal might be yes. for an alternative to the battle? The sidewalk came in at well over budget. Um, and that was the sidewalk around the athletic field. Mm -hmm. Came in at uh, around forty-eight thousand uh, dollars, which was uh, you know, almost seventy-five percent higher than what we expected. Um, so we are not going forward with that at this point. Um, but after seeing um, our auditorium uh, in terms of a screen and a projector, um, I think it would behoove us to use some of this money to do that, and it would fit under office furniture and fit the scope of the project. What so are we doing about the sidewalk? We're not going to do anything with the sidewalk. So the access issue that we had that was wanting a sidewalk, yeah. how are we dealing with that? Well, right now we don't have a, a, a plan for it. We're lucky people. Um, with a perfect world, we would like to have a sidewalk over there, but it's not the forty-seven thousand dollars. No, but I mean, yeah. Should we do a gravel path? I mean, I like, can look into what, that. You know, whatever yeah. our alternatives, because we thought we needed one for a reason. We did. So yeah. maybe maybe there's some other alternatives besides going all the way to the I'll look at path. You know. I'll look at that. Um, we'll have a good idea by the end of this month exactly how much is left to as well. Once we get the bids in for the uh, finish up the bids for the uh, for the workroom, um, so we'll have a pretty good idea of how much is left at that point. So I'll look at gravel path as well. 
Um, and the projector and the screen would be a back projector, so it wouldn't come from the front, and the screen would be electric uh, uh, coming down. So that came in around $11,000, but you wouldn't have to replace the screen for 30 years. The projector is a uh, high depth, uh, which they say useful life compared to how many times you'll use it. It's not like a classroom, and there you're going to use it you know, a quarter of the time. Um, they're, they're thinking uh, you know, about eight to 12 years with the, with the projector. And we'll do video too? Yes. And I'll have a whole setup where you'll, um, we're also looking at uh, a Bluetooth speaker as well to connect to that system. I know we have our own system. to the sound system. Yes. So um, that's the feedback we got. And it would also would allow us to fit the scope of the project because it would fit, would fit into office. So if we're okay moving forward with that, it's under $15,000, you know, that forward. So would we need to approve that though? We wouldn't. Because that's part of the scope of the project. Okay. Um, are there any questions on, on the uh, capital project before we to the EBC? Yes. I'm I mean, sorry. I have, a, I have a screen and I have an auditorium a show place like that without the screen projector. Yeah, that's yeah. unbelievable that we haven't had something. Especially as we're you know we want to encourage more guest speakers and we want to yep. encourage Especially the community involvement too. You know, people using their own. So yeah, when we invite guests in, and yes. if you want to have a multimedia presentation, they can't do that. Right. Well, even our own multimedia stuff is. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, our musical stuff where we do slideshows on the side, and it's like. You can't see it. We have this beautiful auditorium, and we have no way to do AD. Yeah. Right. If I can interject, we literally use that projector. Yeah. We take the board projector right. and put no, it on I, a I, table down below. Right. And Nick, That's what Nick I mean. Anchor has been kind enough to bring in his own personal yeah. screen yeah. and chain it to one of the drops <laughs> so we have something to use right. for a beautiful facility. Our audio and music video are antiquated exactly. yeah. or non existent. Thank you, Nick. Where are you <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a um, capital question yep. to follow up on the question that. At the last report about AC. Yep. Do we have some responses back? Yes, yeah, Scary is, uh, I think he just got prices in for the air conditioners and they should be being put in those stairs if we thought. So, thank you. I'll get a follow up on that to get exact dates in there. Great. So, thanks. Um, okay, anything else on the capital project? Take it away, EPC. EPC has uh, started. Um, if you look at um, small pieces right now this month. So let me just go through. Actually, excuse me, next week, my fault. Um, they're doing, let me get back to my notes. <laughs> they are starting next week with a cooler and freezer and pipes and valves um, and making sure that's all taken care of because it's less invasive in terms of uh, they don't have to be around students. They can do it during first shift, that type of stuff. So they're going to get that done and they're going to start the interior lighting of the high school soon after that. And then they'll work their way down the middle school, uh, elementary school. So through the year, uh, we should have just about everything done by around April, except for some summer stuff, which is the pool, and uh, another uh, item in the summer as well. That have to do. So they will move through in second shift. Um, they'll let Gary know when they're coming in. And um, it's pretty amazing what's going to end up happening uh, in terms of uh, our ability to the lighting uh, automatically turning off, uh, the dimmers, uh, the, the different types of lighting we're going to put in. They're actually going as far as putting in uh, different colored lights for our front of our building so we can shine different, uh, it comes with their package. Are they doing the parking lot lights? Yes. Great. And they're going to keep that. <laughs> we won't have to walk out in the dark. They're going to keep it at 30% all the time at night. So there'll nice. always be a haze or whatever. And obviously, if Gary knows when there's an event going on, he'll, he'll have a 30% is better than that. Yes, when they explain the new lighting system, 30% will be great. Mm -hmm. So that'll always be on. And uh, we should start to see savings, they told us, by uh, by December. So it'll already kick off and go. So Very thorough. I'll tell you, it's been great. I mean, I've been through a couple building projects on the outside, a little bit on the inside. But the amount of oversight is outstanding. Amount of people in a room working together, collaborating, checks and balances, going over everything has been pretty amazing. And the same thing with the EPC. We'll be starting to meet every two weeks to make sure that we're on date. And again, Gary is outstanding. So, so 
That's where we are at this point. Any questions on the UPC? Good, thank you. Okay, the next point would be uh, logo. Yes. These wouldn't open on my Oh, just the first one didn't open. But starting with the second one, I could. On my computer at home, I couldn't get in. Not opening? No, it's not okay. opening here. Here, see? Here's a yeah. Well, you're special. Oh, you got it. You could open it right now. Now, I, I presented these two at the at the uh, opening day. I also went down to the senior center last week and um, spoke to them and met with them. <laughs> I pitched that to them as well and uh, explained what we were trying to do. And um, they liked the uh, the. Uh, Everyone seemed more people like the um, puzzle idea. You want to pass this around so, and you all can look at it? Is there more than one in here? Yeah. I don't know. One thing that I noticed that was missing from that is we had talked about having our, our slogan. No, these aren't the. These aren't it. So that's not. It. Nope. I'm going to go to the puzzle piece, and I'm sorry about that. Yeah, was that this one that we were just talking about? That's not the puzzle. No, no. Right. I'm going to send, who's, the, who's up on the screen? Is it? Here? I'm, to here. I'm sorry. Um, but the, the other ones are, if you want to take a look at the, um, at the values, these are the icons for each value that we talked about. Yes, I'm going to send it over While we're waiting for this to um, appear, mm -hmm. does anyone have any comments on the, the other ones that are able to be helpful? What are we, what are we what are is the plan for these? One for each value. One for each value. Okay. Yeah, so you have your individual ones. We want to have, Scott made a good point of making each icon for the value. So people have them, when they see the picture, they start to get used to what the value is. Well, I, I have two questions on, on the kind of building. These are the two up there. Oh, it's up there now. Yeah, sorry. Who, who gave you the feedback they like that one best? The seniors, um, senior citizens like that one, and uh, the majority of our teachers did. It was, it was a, I think the representation, well, here's a way to look at it. And I, I always say it this way. If you look at the Dallas Cowboy star and you change it, everybody would go, what are you doing? 
I keep if telling them not to do the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, but he keeps insisting. If you came out with a new team and it was a new logo, people would say, wow, that's great. Remember, we don't have a logo in terms of what we're doing. So whatever we put out there is going to be fresh and new. And the reason I did like this one is because it fits the, the concept of what we're looking for, meaning all the pieces have to come together. And that's what I've been kind of reinforcing since I've started as well. We need the mission values and, and vision, but if the goals aren't there too, to create the district, which is the big C, all the pieces don't fit together. So I think something like this would look great on our website, on our letterhead, and we have to start ordering new letterhead, and this would be a great opportunity to start doing this as well. The question I have, I guess, is do you really need the vision puzzle piece with the vision over the top? The vision? On the bottom, you mean? Do you need the vision? Yeah, do you need that puzzle piece when you've got the vision stated overarching the whole thing? Good point to look at. That's the only thing that I, I'm thinking about with it. And again, I think anything would be great and fresh. Yeah. So whatever we decide, it'll be something somebody will say, wow, that's our new logo. It will be more compact. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. And maybe we actually put vision and then the word vision in front of everyone, just so people know that it's. We could do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So vision, vision colon. Yep. Every learner and have that overarching whole thing. That makes sense. What do you think of? Or you could put our vision because that's so nice. Good idea. Put our right. vision in between the semicircle and the C. Okay. So in that between that and the C? Yeah, our vision. Okay. So our vision colon, right? Because I see what you're trying. You're trying to like make it so it's not this piece that came no. out. Right. <laughs> right. And, and it for is our visual. vision stated there, right? right? So, so this so, is what so we're working for. So if it's, it's, it's for visually, like it. do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm thinking, okay, if, you, if you're trying to make it more compact, if you put our vision right underneath our vision, and then there's the C and then mission goals values that might accomplish what you're trying to do. I agree. I'll get that one made up, send it out, sound good? I like that. It's a good idea. That kind of shores it up, but that extra piece yeah. on the bottom. Yeah. What do you think of the logos for each individual? Well, as, as I was starting to say, um, there are two of them that I had a question about. Um, one was on accountability. I couldn't figure out what that thing was up on top there. It's a clipboard. It's a clipboard. Oh, that's a clipboard. When you see the whole thing. Okay, if you don't see it, it's better than me. Okay, the other one that I had a question about was the engagement one. I wasn't quite sure yeah, that one what, didn't, what that was it didn't saying. Get Engagement is maybe four people around together facing each other and talking. You know, yeah, like they like weren't that. consistent. Like, typically, we <laughs> those for a variety of things. They would, they would all be a circle, or they would all be a square. They, they weren't consistent styles from one to the next. They you weren't. Know, I seem to say circles. Maybe it was the accountability that was kind of like the checkbox, and maybe it's fine. I, mean, I just didn't think they were a consistent style. Or some had background, some didn't. The other two that I thought maybe we could do better on were empathy and perseverance. Um, I don't know, is a handshake makes me think of empathy? Sure. Let me take a, a look at a couple. Yeah. yeah. Let me take a look at those three. Sound yeah. good? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I do the weekly update next week, I'll send them out. I really like I really like the community one. I thought 
Yeah. yeah, that was great. That was nice. I liked the respect one. I thought that was awesome. Um, if you don't mind, I'm just yeah, taking so a, a minute to fill in on our incoming um, the board was feeling that we made decisions without having a, 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 a vision, without knowing where are we going, instead of just, well, this looks good, and then next year, this looks good. So we really spent a bunch of time with community involvement and the, all the different constituent groups and uh, included, and spent a lot of, a whole year coming up with a, a vision, mission, values, uh, pro statement, and goals to achieve those ends. And, um, and this is uh, the next step of the process is to start to get it out there so that it becomes something that all of our constituent groups are familiar with, conversant with, and understand. So that's what this is about. Thank you. Okay, uh, anything else on these? Or are we going to move on? So we'll get a, an update. Those are things. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next point on the agenda is to welcome our student representative. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler Pinkerton. And it's, uh, Tyler Pinkerton. I was going to ask him to introduce himself, but that would be hard. But I, I'm sure this. Plan on making it, but I don't know why he didn't make it. So I'll follow so up with him. I, I assume that something came up. And, well, Great kid. You know Tyler? Outstanding young man. R really, uh, you're going to get yeah, really great. So uh, if, you, if you watch the video, welcome, and yes. we look forward to your participation. <laughs> I, I plan to meet with him a week before each meeting, and we'll talk about you know, any issues, concerns, and presentation for it. And also, in, in the past uh, the last year, we've also had a, a kind of a, a report from them as part of the board docs prior to the meeting, so that we're kind of prepared to um, you know, fill up what's, what's coming. So. Yeah, as I meet with a week before, I'll meet with them on Thursday before right. I meet with you. Yeah. And then I'll put it together. And they typically had a, a working relationship with the principal. Okay. So it was high school yeah. based. Yeah. yeah, you really enjoy it. Yeah. He's, he's sharp. Okay. So now we have uh, opening day report. Um, I think the opening. Uh, our superintendent conference day went very well. Um, I think we got a lot accomplished. Uh, we were able to kind of set a tone, I think. Um, had more of a welcome back feeling as opposed to, oh boy, we're back for superintendent conference day. So I think we got a lot of feedback on that. Uh, our opening day of school was outstanding. I've got it, I, I mentioned it to uh, Tracy and Carol Ann, but they did an amazing job with the high school at the start and the opening day. Kids are really involved, they're excited about it. And there was a lot of chatter about it. And it was kind of nice to go walk around and see how kids were engaged, but also see some of the kids who weren't and have an opportunity to go up and talk with them and get them engaged. There's some kids, newer kids, you know, sitting out in the periphery, you know, but it was nice to go up and talk. I probably talked to four or five of those students and said, hey, don't you? And then as I was talking to most of those students, a group of kids came over and said, hey, why don't you come with us? So it was exactly what the plan was, you know? Um, so I think it was, uh, extremely well planned out. Um, they did a skits at the end, which were really outstanding. I won't drop the ball on whose uh, kids it was, but there was two, uh, two kids that did a, uh, two students that did a uh, dance uh, thing at the end, which was literally outstanding in mass, so nobody knew who they were. Um, but it just, it was, a, it was a good feel for the kids. And I love the idea because it gets kids to get to know everybody and, and be part of something that's just not the first day of school, but again, a welcome back celebration. Stacy had a great idea this year of going kindergarten and uh, pre-K um, the, the next day. Uh, the first day we just had the, the one through uh, uh, one through five uh, students, and it was a great opportunity to get them in the system and acclimated and organized. And then the next day bring in the kindergarten and pre -K, which was great. So and I think that went off very well. There was only one big crier, but besides that, uh, everybody else was was kind of ready to go. And uh, it was really nice to see the middle school, all the rooms pretty much be ready. Um, great job by the staff coming in over the weekend of the holiday to make sure everything was set and ready to go. Um, and even our tech people coming in on a Sunday, I think, or Saturday to make sure that our phones were up and that our internet was up. And um, in the special ed room and things that we finished really a great job. When I came in that Friday to Monday, it was, I was shocked. 
We didn't skip a beat in the classroom. No. The office was the thing that was the, the yep. least set up. Student, students so are in, we're in the new office now? We are in the new office. We have the first day. makeshift furniture for the time being, mm -hmm. and, but student student rooms were ready at 100% for day one. It was great. So no annex here? No, not yet. They're coming. The mega room that we built upstairs, so the social studies room, uh, standing with two rooms together, and a special ed room. That's Check that out. Yeah, that's, yeah, we have some real cool flexible seating coming in for that. It's going to be a special, a real special place. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So a good vibe. I think a good start. Um, also a good start for you know. I don't want to say anything about athletics, but good start for athletic programs too. I think I've ever seen some boys soccer winning, girls very competitive, football winning, and I think that always sets a great time. I think there's no two ways about it. So um, everything, yeah. So good, good opening, opening. Week. Day and over two weeks. You guys have any comments? I have one thing to add. I, I went to the uh, Q's uh, reception at the golf course, and um, and um, it was uh, it was just very exciting to see how how fired up the teachers were, you know, to, based on this conference day and, and really looking forward to starting the new year. And, and it was a very uh, uplifting kind of. The feeling and experience. So I just want to commend you for the presentation that you gave and the way that they went. And I think it's a great start to your first year here. Thank you. And, and included in there is the enrollment for the first five days too. Mm How -hmm. does that compare to last year? It's about the same. We're down about 18 students, 20 students. Okay. And uh, from five years ago, the non-resident K-12 students were 70, and now. Overall, the enrollment is down about 50 or 60 from about five or six years ago. Um, but I'd say the numbers are really great for the pre-K numbers. Pre-K numbers were outstanding. And that was the highest number we had in six you know, eight years that we had. So we had 41 students on that pre-K. So at 14 for the pre-K three. So it looks like we're consistently leveling off at that 65, 70, 60 to 70 number. It's like a few, you know. Which is, we had a uh, projection done a few years ago, and that's kind of what they projected right. around the 900 per view hour plateau. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, second year of pre K uh, pre-K three. Third. Third year. Third year. This is the third year. Yeah. What did we expect of that population to be? I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah. We're working. I usually down. How many students? Yeah. We can take 14 in the classroom and they can have up to four in head start of the week. Okay, so it's maxed out. I, that's what I couldn't remember is whether it was the size we wanted it to be or not. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we'll move ahead to approvals. Um, do I have a motion for a consent agenda? Is there anything that anyone needs to pull out? He minutes because some of us were. Okay, so B through J. Would that be agreeable? Mm -hmm. Can I, if it is, can I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any discussion? No, I was okay. just seeing where what I, I wanted to talk about was. Funded. All in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so first thing is minutes. Anything on the minutes? I have one thing in the uh, members present that didn't show repeat, and when that's the case, I think it would be good to say that they're absent, just so that the name appears that you put the drop from the school board something. See that, Andrew? Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Members present, and she just indicated if someone's absent. Okay. Anything else from this? Do we want to make a motion to approve the, the, the August 7th minutes? Um, we can do that. And with the changes that you made? Why don't I just close out the board now? So I don't know. I don't know. Good question. I don't have an answer.
Okay, so a motion to approve the, um, the, the minutes from the Senate. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The August uh, 29th minutes. Again, uh, there are two members who are not present, so we're just going to get that in the future. So, Discussion on the on those. We want to take a minute to look over them. I make a motion. Do I have a second? All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Let's get to Jen and uh, Chris abstain. Okie doke. Moving right along, we have bills. Any question on there? While well, you're looking, I have two. One is 57376, House of Good Shepherd, four and a half thousand dollars. What is that? a special replacement. Okay. And also JB Supply, 57482. Just, just eleven thousand dollars is what called. Yeah, that's on the. Just for a minute, give me the bell Thank you. Any other questions? What was the village of Camden for? Um, water sewer. <clears throat> Have we monitored what's gone on since the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I check them every time. So it's steady off yeah. now. We don't have the moderation. Right. Yeah, changes going on. Anything else? Good stuff? Yep. Okay, so we'll move ahead to Treasurer's Report. Anything on the Treasurer's Report? Aside from me not saying anything about interest. Two ten thousandths of one percent, though, I'll say, is, is not much interest. But the other ones would be to be able to get. We get only one can read that. We would do that once we had some funding. Any questions? No. No. Okay. Next we have APPR, our annual recertification training. Anything there? Okay. Just let you know, Nick has been trained over the summer from Schenectady, so he's coming and we'll be fine too. Okay. As that process starts in two weeks. Okay. The, cap, the um, Central Association of Blind Visually Impaired contract. Any questions there? Could you remind us again what this is for? Um, the student receives services and mobility services. Ah. Any questions? <coughs> Transportation contract. I was surprised. It seemed too cheap. <laughs> no, no, no. I meant the totally anticipated cost of eighty four ninety one because it says it's for September to June. What is it like one day a week? This is a parent transporting the child. That's not right. Oh, yeah, this is the one the parent agreed to take. I th yeah. okay. I thought I saw brown on this. I'm like, oh, how no. can it possibly then, be yes. that cheap? You are <laughs> absolutely correct about that. The new. <coughs> okay, Mr. Prisal. Yes. Are we done? They're going to live there. <laughs> Substitute pay rate. Uh, Nick, did you want to just talk about that a little bit? Yes, it's uh, because of the the, uh, the union has to seek out any area district that is paying above what our rate is, or at least the same. So our contract says we have to go five dollars more. Than the other rates. So four plan your company. There was a one. What were we before? I think I remember. Okay, so that's what I did. Yep. That's the normal increase usually. Any questions there? Okay.
Okay, going on to the Bosi substitute list. Any issues there? I did have a question as I reviewed this. This seemed like the entire list again for Bosi's, rather than just the ones that were pertinent to us or the updates or something. And toward the end of last year, they figured out how to get just the updates. Yeah, so we don't see the big list every time. I don't know how they figured it out, but they did. I will find out. Okay, anything else on that? Social Studies Conference. So we talked about last time, uh, we have our Social Studies Department that was selected to speak at the National Conference and present. Um, and I know we're not going out of state for our conferences, but I would recommend supporting anybody that would uh, be able to speak at a national level to give our district uh, the opportunity to get the uh, opportunity for our teachers, but also opportunity for us to get our name out there and the great things that we do. So, and to piggyback off of the other piece with the credit card that I looked into them as well. And um, the business school officials of New York State actually have a process or a program that they use. So she just emailed it to me yesterday. So I'll fill you in on one of those. came up with a process that they get money back. So. One of the things I was talking about, you know, not out of state is you know, obviously the expense of travel. Um, but with some, you know, we're looking into if we could use um, air air miles by paying off some of the bills with that appropriate credit card, which would mean they could people could go anywhere that's just because of hotel expense. Um, we did that, I know, when I was working as a vet, and I'd go to California, went to Hawaii, and it was just like going to New Jersey. You know, I mean, you know, there are huge differences in terms of what it cost us. Some of those programs you can actually get hotel stuff, credit stuff, too. Yeah. So. But I mean, just, I think if, if we could do that, I think it would be more. They ran one where you actually get money reimbursement, and you get your money back. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so anyhow, we'll, well, we should have some information further yep. about that going forward. So I have some, I don't disagree with anything you said, Nick, but I have a little bit of concern in that we set certain parameters when we went through the budget process entire district built their budget on that parameter. And now we would, in a isolated situation, modify that rule after the fact. So I'm struggling with that aspect of it. Or I think you said we can attend. I don't think we've ever said we can present. Is that correct? So I don't disagree with what you said. I'm, I'm just concerned that what about other people that would have but didn't because we told them that was the rule. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Agreed? Um, so to go along with that, when did these teachers apply? Last year. Okay, so was that before? Before the policy. The January, policy. February of last year. Yeah, so, so, so they, because I was going to say, in order to be a presenter, you would have to do it in way in advance, so. Okay. Um, I think that does make a difference. I'm assuming that we supported them applying for it, so. That's yeah, but the budget process would have been after it, so that, that's a valid point. But we probably wouldn't even know, because that's an administrative thing for them to. I mean, the, the administration is important. So we won't know that. But, right, they just, two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, not that. Yeah, they're not going to find it out too late. They just need to know when you've been I guess. So, so I, guess, I guess the thing that I would ask is, how would we make this fair and equitable for others in the district? That's, that's what I'm really asking. Well, uh, yeah, I think a, a, a policy of it, we go forward and say nobody, you know, out of state, we can keep it that way, but, but because they approved what they, they put in for last year, it was kind of out of their control, and we will support that. That's what I would do. Okay. And I would, I would think that we might be able to modify it should transportation no longer be an issue. 
Right. Well, that that's what I was saying. I, I'm willing to consider the modifications and everything, but let's make sure we do it in a way that do we earmark that money that we gain back from what we earn? Let's say that says for travel costs if we have any presenters. I, I would probably keep it. Okay. I, was say I think we're stuck to get out of because yeah. there's not going to be a, probably a lot of people. Uh, you, you know, it's very t difficult. It's difficult to, to get yeah. you chosen to, to yep. present on a national level. So I was going to say stipulated to if, if they go out of state, it's because they're presenting. Correct. So let me work on something and I'll draft it up. Does that sound good? And then we can well, take I, a look at it. I, I just I just would think that if if travel were no longer an issue, um, sometimes there are unique. Um, professional development opportunities that would be out of state that I would want our staff to go to. So I wouldn't really want to rule that out altogether as long as it was not a financially you know, onerous thing for the district. Right. So I, I'm not prepared to go that route yet because I, I hate to rob our teachers of the opportunity uh, to benefit from something like that should be available. Yeah, it's not everything's available right. in New York, Pennsylvania. And Where did you cut it off? Well, so for example, if you're three months into it, and well, these three conferences came up first, and then six months later, these three conferences came up, and we were out of the funds that we earmarked for that. Well, I think we could we could stipulate that as long as it would not be a financial burden to the district for people to attend these things, and we can cover it, you know, with the reimbursements, then I think I'd be good with it. If it became an added expense for the district, especially given our our, our financial straits at this point, and I'm opposed to that. Does that make sense? Philosophically, I agree, Mark. I'm just thinking how you would administer that, and I think that's really set and make up for a bit of a nightmare in terms of the calendarization of that and requests and whether there's money available yet or, or not, or whether it's all been used, and then some people you're saying yes to and some people you're saying no to. I, I would give it more thought of mm -hmm. how we allocate that money for that purpose and maybe people need to apply for it in advance and we decide which ones are noteworthy to support mm -hmm. to use what we estimate that pot would be worth, you know, something like that that's maybe a little bit less time based, right? And, uh, and I, I agree, I just don't think we should be, you know, hard, you know like hard yeah. and fast about it. If we have the ability to be a little flexible with, with some, you know, right. organ, some structural. So I would make a suggestion to the board. In, in this particular case, it was applied for last year. We had different budget rules. We got accepted. It's a national conference and we're presenting and we support that. And we stay, we keep in place our current budget restrictions until we have an alternative funding mechanism in place, and then we develop a process to go with that funding mechanism. That would be my recommendation. I can send that out. I can email and make sure that that's clear. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The reason why they will be. Okay. And I'll come up, I'll draft something up and we'll talk about it once I get the other piece. Sure. So. Okay, anything else on, on this? And then the uh, last piece is the iTutor. Uh, yes. Um, we have some situations sometimes where we don't have tutors available to uh, our students who might be suspended for, say, three days or something of that nature. We have to offer them two hours of, uh, of tutoring services or, or instructional services. And sometimes we don't have tutors available, but we still have to offer the instruction. Or it might be a situation where we have a student who might be out extended period of time and we can't put a tutor there. Um, this organization called iTutor, which is the last district, and there's a group of districts in the state that use it, uh, have certified teachers. It's on uh, the computer. Uh, so they're actually, now everyone has a one-to-one -one for the most part from 6 through 12. They can, um, they'll be able to see the tutor online, speak with the tutor. The tutor will gather <coughs> the information from the teachers, that the teacher, get the work to the, to the students, get it back from them, and then send it back to the teacher at the school. So the process is pretty thorough, uh, and they're all certified teachers in the content area that we that we're doing. When is the one-to-one -one going to be across the whole district? Um, the whole district depends on state reimbursement. 
Um, hopefully Monday we will be one to one in ninth and tenth grade and fourth and fifth grade, as well as grade level cards in each other grade level. Um, there are 340 devices downstairs that we're asset tagging, and et cetera, et cetera. So it, it's here and it's happening. As we enter each phase, it depends on how fast the state gets our money back to us so we can respend for the next phase. We're anticipating 60 to 90 days um, in between each purchase. Um, as soon as CDW gets the next order, they're basically allocating those devices to us without them being paid. So as soon as we say, here's the PO, they're shipping to us. Um, so their turnaround is within a week. So on that schedule, when, when would we anticipate the end of the year? I mean, end if, of if academic we, year? If we stick to 60 to 90 days, no, we should be looking somewhere in the February, early March range. If the 60 to 90 turns into 90 to 120, I'm very optimistic by the end of this academic year, we will be fully one-to-one. -one. The other caveat we can make is we do have Blue Ridge devices. Um, we plan for, we're rolling out your ninth grade, we have seven to 10 extra devices just for ninth grade. In an instance where a student is suspended, we have to, we can send the device home with a Khajiit home and, and provide that for that student for those three to five days, even if they aren't in a one-to-one -one grade. So will all students then have the training to be able to utilize the device even if they're not in a one-to-one -one grade yet? In, no, in, I mean now, because if we're doing in, right in 6 through 12 now, not necessarily on iTutor, but in 6 through 12 right now, I would, I'd be very confident saying that at that point, all students have logged into a Google Classroom, all students have a basic knowledge of Google operation, just because it is, even without being one-to-one, -one, it's being used in wide swaths um, across grade levels. Okay. So iTutor, is it a web-based tool? Yes. <coughs> okay. So it doesn't work through our learning system, it works through mm -hmm. a website. So what I would propose is just to purchase a number of hours, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't propose to purchase a lot. I probably would. I said about 15 here. I think I'd go more to 20 or 30. Give it a shot for this year and see how it works. And then if we feel comfortable, then we can see how it works from there. I'm just worried about a kid who might be out 15 days for a health issue or something like that. We might have to make sure that we get the tutor to do it. We do have two tutors who are interested in helping us out, but it wouldn't be every day. Um, and if we get caught, we would be out of compliance with what we'd have to offer So having so, having had children in the district get hurt and be in the hospital and have to have tutors come to my house. Um, I understand the benefit of this. Uh, my, my question really is, each time it's been done by the teachers, and I don't know, I don't know any of the background, do they get paid extra for that? Is this something that those teachers want? Are they taking away from them? I don't want to create. This would only be used if the teacher couldn't. Okay. Oh. All right. I wouldn't want to be in a situation where, okay, say we had two kids out mm -hmm. and then another kid was hurt and now those two teachers are covered. A student we can't cover the third. Right. Like we've been in a situation where it hasn't that's ha that's happened. That's when it would be used. Okay. So and and I would suggest that like, if we can buy the hours as we go. I would probably look at 20 or 30 hours because we have the second tutor, so I felt much more comfortable that we're in better shape since last week when I put this on. So if we did 20 and gave it a shot this year to see what it would look like, then we can kind of take it. Will the hours carry if we The hours will not carry. That's why I would go minimum. And with the second tutor, I feel much more comfortable. And how many hours of tutoring did we need last year? I don't know that offhand because we actually didn't tutor kids who were two or three days. We had, we had several students that were about business. So hundreds? Oh. Okay. Yeah, and that was just within the students with specialized in medical issues. Okay, not even the suspensions. Right. Okay. So, so if we go through the 20 and we feel comfortable and it's working, and then we can possibly do that. And you will implement an administrative process so teachers have the first right of the council or something? Right. Those two tutors who applied will get the first dibs. If they're not there or available, you would have when new tutoring opportunities come up, do you solicit teachers again? Yes, they would be the first. No, I mean beyond the two. Let's say we have two that are in need, so you've got those two assigned, and now there's another three students. Do you re-solicit our teachers or no? Um, what I can 
Well, it's a timing thing, but I'll, I'll send something out to all the teams and see who's available. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah, because I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't want to make sure we don't take yeah. away from that. I'm pretty sure the one teacher was actually asked at the time my child got hurt, and they decided then to do it. It wasn't like they were on, on the bench, so to speak. You know, I know there's situations where we have a cover suspensions. We just don't get ourselves in no, I, I'm in total agreement. I just want to make sure we have an ongoing process that they can raise their hand, you know, because sometimes that makes a difference. Oh, Johnny got hurt, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to help out, absolutely, you know. Sounds good. Okay, one thing in the uh, in the approval, it does those 50 hours. I would go with 20 if you don't mind me changing it. I just got a two. Okay, well, we go Friday. with 20 then? Yeah, yeah 20, agreed. So you got that? How does that cost compare to our cost today for using teachers? Teachers, I think, is 25 plus. Um, right, but you're also still in the FICA yes. and everything else. So it's about $20 more. But is the teachers I2 more or the no, teachers more? But again, if only if you use it, you don't have the teacher. Yeah, I just don't want to be, get ourselves in a situation where we don't have Okay, we good on that then? Mm -hmm. We go through a COSER with the local BOCES, not our BOCES, but uh, ONC BOCES. And it's 55, but we'll go down to 50, same as 5 bucks. Okay, so uh, all in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Um, now, uh, appointments. There are four other than the uh, sports appointments. Or three, I'm sorry. Um, three, Cynthia Miller, three hour monitor, Michelle Eggleston, Art Department Chairperson, and Patricia Prime, National Honor Society Advisor. And then there's the master list of coaches. First of all, do I have a, uh, we do consent agenda on those? Yes, well? please. Do I have a motion? Um, I would, can we just do yeah. the three first? Yes. Okay. Do do the three before we get to the coaches. Okay, so do I have a motion for the, for the, the three? Motion. Second. Any discussion on any of those? No. All in favor? Aye. All. Okay, now we get to the coaches master list. So. Um, we do we want to do points and fall, so we're just looking at what turns right. Okay. We've already done it. Fall, correct? Yes. I will make a motion that we go to executive session. I'll second that. Okay, so you'd like to do this in executive session? Yes, please. Okay. No discussion. We can't vote on that. Right. But for discussion. Okay, so we will have a discussion at least in executive session. Is there anything else on the agenda here? Contract revision. This is a revision to Andrea's contract regarding a never separate uh, yeah, number of weeks vacation after, after the third year. So I saw that that was what was highlighted. Yeah, but I had some other comments on that second. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Does that need to be done in executive session too, I think? What's that? Because it's individual person. Commenting on the end of individuals. Contract. Oh, yes. Okay, so, um, so we'll put this in the executive session. Yes. Okay. Um, Sorry. So then, um, do I have a mo any old business or new business? Do I have a motion to recess into executive session? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 